Yeah, who's next? Who's next? I wasn't the first. I'm certainly not the last. When did this start? Uh, so this all started New Year's Day. I uh, woke up to the, a phone call saying, hey, did you move the pits because they're gone? Uh, so that was about 10 o'clock New Year's Day, New Year's morning. And we got here, you didn't move them. No, I didn't move them. So the first thing I did was jumped up out of bed and start scrubbing through my cameras uh, and saw a van pull up at 5.15 that morning and cut, start cutting the locks on the trailer. Uh, so as soon as I knew that, I started pulling up my tracking devices that I have on the, on the barbecue pit. Because it's not just something that you can go out and replace. It's not like no. replacing, no. you know. No, they're custom barbecue pits. It's a dual 500 gallon propane tanks that are repurposed. So it's about an 8,000 pound unit on a dual axle trailer. So that's uh, valued at about $30,000. That's yeah. a big hit for yeah. a small business. Yeah, huge, huge hit. Yeah, we use it for all of our catering, all our special events. Uh, we use it for community events, so. Yep. What would what'd you think when you saw someone grinding down that lot? Uh, just sick to my stomach. Sick to my stomach that somebody could be so brazen and just do that, you know, New Year's Day uh, to come up and clearly cut the locks. You know, it's it's not something that was just an unused pit. They knew exactly what they were doing because there were several locks on that pit. Hmm. So you, you scrubbed through the cameras. Right, scrubbed through the cameras, kind of uh, got my bearings about how long it took them and when they left, pulled the tracking up. From the time I realized the pits were stolen, I, I left my front door and I located the pits within 13 minutes. Uh, they were actually abandoned in a field about two and a half miles from here. That's not the end of the story. No, that is definitely not the end of the story. So uh, they were actually in a field next to a, a, a another Fort Worth business, a restaurant. Uh, so upon looking around the location, I said, hey, they've got cameras on their building. So let me go inside and talk to the talk to the business owners or talk to somebody working and see if I can look at their cameras. Uh, because I noticed their time lined up. They were actually open about the time my pits were dropped off. So I was like, perfect, I've got witnesses. Uh, unfortunately, the person I spoke to inside told me the business owner wasn't there, even though it turned out he was a business owner. Hey, he also told me that their cameras were dummy cameras and didn't work, so he wasn't very helpful at all. So you got your pits back. You didn't stop, though. Right, got, got our pits back, but I, I, you know, I had a feeling, hey, they ditched the pits there, they're gonna come back later for them, so let's sit on the location and see what we can discover. So uh, talked to some other local businesses owner around that location and were able to set up surveillance within the immediate area. Took about three days for the uh, suspect van to return to the location with another trailer. So this is the van that you saw? This is the same van that we saw in our surveillance video. Very distinct markings, very distinct paint peeled on certain sides, very distinct paint pattern, very distinct broken out rear window. Uh, it was really easy to identify, so that same van returned. You see that van come back, what do you think? Uh, freaking out, you know, uh, watching this van. I'm sitting here just looking at this van saying, oh my God, here they are. They really showed back up and they've got another trailer attached. Uh, but what was really shocking was watching the driver get out of the van and walk inside of this restaurant that we found our pits next to. Uh, I had no idea that they would be connected, but I actually watched the driver of the van go inside the restaurant for a good 15 to 20 minutes. Could he have just been going for a cup of coffee? Uh, you would think so. So that's what I thought. So we, we packed up, left, about three more days, passed by, the same van pulls back up, goes inside again, comes back out and moves the employee vehicle. I say employee, could be employee, could be owner, but actually moves the employee vehicle and starts loading appliances off of the back of this van into the uh, vehicle that belongs to one of the employees slash owner there. What do you do at that point? Uh, I'm freaking out. I'm like, this guy's directly involved. He lied to my face. He knows this person that stole my pits. And now he's taking equipment from him. Is it stolen? Could be. I don't know why people would do this at five in the morning. Uh, but that was my immediate thought. I said, this is going a lot further than, than we know. Um, so we start turning that evidence over to police. However, it happens again. Uh, this time we actually follow and tail this vehicle and observe them stashing these appliances at another stash house in South Fort Worth. Mm. Uh, and then we observe other people come by at different parts of the day and pick up those appliances. What do you do at that point? Uh, really, you know, thinking about our safety. Hey, do we confront these guys? Probably not. We don't end up dead, but we're like, you know, how far does this go? How many people are they ripping off uh, every single day? During that investigation, we start talking to our neighbors within our vicinity here at Panther City 
and discover another trailer being stolen on tape. That owner didn't even know his trailer was stolen until we actually dug through the surveillance video of a neighboring business. And we had to reach out to him and say, hey, do you know your trailer was stolen? Here's the footage, same exact van that stole ours. So at this point, how many businesses do you, have you seen the video connecting this van to trailer theft? Uh, three, three personally. And then I've been sent video from an Arlington business uh, where their food truck was stolen in mid-December. Same exact van on their video as well. So it's this business, one that you s alerted the owner, the Arlington right. one, what's the third there? Uh, the third one was a, a, a power wash, and this one was just uh, Saturday, this past Saturday. That one, the police were actually able to arrive while the van was still there. However, the, the driver of the van got in another vehicle and left beforehand. So the police actually have custody of the van. So police have impounded the van. Impounded the van. That's tied to potentially right. several different trailer thefts. Right, that's correct. When you put all these pieces together, right. at the center of this is this other restaurant. Right. The van keeps going by there. Right. You keep seeing people coming in and out of right. the restaurant to the van, the driver, right. the connection here. Right. What makes you so sure this restaurant's involved? Uh, because he, really because he hands over his vehicle keys and loads the items from this van into his personal vehicle. Uh, we observe that. So he knows, he knows our suspects, whether he's involved in receiving stolen goods, uh, don't know exactly what is involved in, but he is involved to the capacity where at least he knows our suspects and he's being uncooperative with police saying he has no idea who they are. What do you want to see happen? I want to see people go to jail. I mean, this is happening over and over again. Uh, most people let this just go, especially if they were to get their property back, they let it go. But it's going to happen again and again and again uh, to the other citizens of Fort Worth. I mean, this might have put somebody out of business. If that was our only smoker and our only means of cooking our food, we would have been out of business. I've got 32 employees that I'm responsible for so they can feed their families. Uh, that would have been gone. And then what? I just can't sit by and let that happen. I think that's so interesting because I think so, some folks will watch us and say, hey, he got his smoker back. Let yeah. it go. Yeah. Yeah, who's next? Who's next? I wasn't the first. I'm certainly not the last. Um, at this point, what are you hearing from police? Uh, if you get any more evidence, just send it to us. Really nothing's going on. Um, that owner knows who the suspect is. He knows that person personally. I've seen the interaction. Uh, I have hours of video. Turn him in. Turn them in. If you're fencing items for this guy, whatever, I don't care. Stop, stop this. Uh, you're using your business. The, the, the restaurant community is, is very tight knit in Fort Worth. Uh, it's a very hard industry. It's very hard to survive. Every single day I read about a new restaurant closing down, closing their doors. Uh, this doesn't help. Uh, it's hard enough, like I said, if it were just me, I could deal with it, but I've got 32 employees, like I said, to account for. It's their livelihoods as well, so they've got to stop. You know, somebody has to pay for this, somebody has to answer for what they're doing. They mess with the wrong barbecue place. Yeah, yeah, they did mess with the wrong barbecue place. Uh, we're not just going to stand by and take it. You called them out on social media. You're not just doing this interview, you posted about it. Right, we did post on social media just so people are aware. Um, it is funny because the same day that we showed up with police and they impounded the vehicle, another officer actually went and ate in the restaurant as this is happening. And it's just a disgusting feeling knowing that they don't know. People need to know. People need to know that what this restaurant is associated with. If they continue to patronize them after that, then that's their decision and that's okay. You know, I don't want to see these employees lose their job. Some of them may know about it, some of them may not. Uh, I'm not out after any one person. I want this to stop. He says he has nothing to do with it. He says he has no idea, he has nothing to do with it. I believe I read today that it, it, it's his not responsibility to check if items are stolen in his parking lot. What do you think of that? Uh, snide, it's, <laughs> it's a slap in the face. He knows exactly what he's doing. To whatever capacity he is involved. Um, but like I said, you mess with the wrong spot. You mess with the wrong spot and now, you know, we're getting flooded with inboxes on social media that he's coming after us and things like that. So be it. Are you concerned at all that he may have a case against you for calling him out like this? Not, not one bit. Why not? Not one bit. I did nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong. I said no names. I mentioned no businesses. I did nothing wrong. But I have video evidence of him directly involved. That's been handed over to the property authorities, not just put out as a smear campaign online. We don't do that.
We don't do that. Yeah, you handed this evidence over starting New Year's Day. Starting New Year's Day, we handed all evidence over to police. So, yep. Chris, what else about this story do you think folks need to know? I think just uh, watch out for your neighbor. Watch out for your neighbor. I mean, everybody's going through a hard time. Uh, you don't know what, what your neighbor's going through, so look out for them. I think we're in such a world of everything's just, uh, if we see something going on, whether it's theft, whether it's violence, whether it's something interesting, you know, we're so quick to pull out our cell phones just to post it for attention and likes on social media. Uh, but there's livelihoods behind that. There's people's lives at stake. There's income at stake. There's so much at stake. H help out your neighbor. That's why we're here to feed the community and provide jobs to Fort Worth. Um, we got into it because we love cooking barbecue and then it turned into so much more. Uh, our name Panther City is it's a nickname for Fort Worth. Fort Worth means everything to us, and, and it's a disgusting feeling to know another neighboring business is involved in a theft from us. Um, if the guy needed a pit, he could have asked. We would have loaned it to him. I've loaned that pit out several times, and yet here we are. So, you know, since, since the ordeal, uh, beefier locks, absolutely, more cameras. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm a firm believer if somebody wants something, they're going to take it. They're going to damage it in the process. They're going to ruin it in the process for you. Uh, the best we can do is just take steps to, to make it harder for them and prevent it. Uh, but we are aware we're spreading the word in the community. Uh, talking to you guys today, we want people to be aware, to be on the lookout. There's lots of other businesses around here. We've had several meetings to say, hey, if you guys need my footage, if you guys need to get access to my cameras, I'm more than happy to. You know, we don't, we don't put cameras up for anything else other than to protect our assets and to protect our customers and protect our employees. Uh, and that goes for our neighbors as well. Uh, this community is in a boom right now. It's growing and it's growing fast and uh, it can all be ruined by crime. There's no room for it and we're not gonna sit around and stay Well, $30,000 is not, is yeah, not, it's a, not a Yeah, it's not a drop in the bucket. You know, we've had propane takes taken. We've had piles of wood taken, stuff like that. Uh, this is a $30,000 pit. And you got it back? And we got it back. Is it okay and damaged? It's okay, it's, it's scratched up. It's scratched up. We'll have it back out in place. Um, pretty soon we'll be cooking barbecue. Pretty again. soon, pretty soon. The only reason we have it, we're just kind of letting the holidays pass by and trying to let this, this bad weather get by, but we'll have it out. Yeah, we're gonna be cooking on it. There's, we're not gonna let them scare us from using the thing. That's what we do, we cook barbecue, so it will be out.